My name is Flash Isaac and I'm a teacher from the future. Hello, you are welcome to episode number 82 of the 120 Days to Jam Physics with Flash Isaac. In this episode, we shall be taking care of or we shall be introducing current electricity. Ladies and gentlemen, earlier we looked at electrostatics, also referred to as static electricity. And we said that static electricities are produced by charges at rest, which means electrostatic charges at rest. How about current electricity? In current electricity, the charges are not at rest. Current electricity are not function of charges at rest. Rather, current electricity deals with charges or electrons in motion. So, for you to mention current, it means there has to be motion. We are not dealing with static or stagnant electricity. Looking at current electricity, it is divided into two, which are AC and DC. AC stands for alternating current, and DC stands for direct current. So, direct current electricity, alternating current electricity. This class or this episode, we focus on direct current electricity. Direct current electricity. Why there is already a separate episode for alternating current electricity. Now, what is direct current? Direct current is a type of current that does not change direction. It flows in one direction. Direct current flows in one direction. It goes like this. And when you deal with talk about direct current, we have terminals. There is positive and there is what negative. By the way, what is current? I will still analyze how current or electricity is being generated in this episode later. But let's take it this way. Current is the flow of charge or electron. And for electrons to flow, there has to be something or a material that can allow that flow of current because not all materials allow the flow of current. The materials that allow the flow of current are referred to as conductors. They conduct. So the flow of charges or electrons in a conductor, that's what we refer to as what? Current. Alternative current, on the other hand, they are not in one direction. They change direction of flow. They go on, off, on, off. And the sources of direct current are batteries. Whether your car battery, your touch light battery, your remote battery, even your phone batteries, the current that they produce is direct current. It's a direct current. It does not change the, uh, uh, the in direction. It flows. And currents generally flow from positive to negative. You have the battery on you, and they say this is plus, this is negative. Current will flow from plus, right? Now, from this plus and minus, there are potentials. The plus side is generally referred to as the path of the high potential, and the minus side is generally referred to as the low potential. So the potential between here and here, that is potential difference, difference in potential. For current to flow or for there to be voltage, there must be difference in potential. And if current is flowing like this, electrons will flow in the opposite direction of current. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my body is pushing me to where I've not reached. <laughs> I wanted to look at the differences between static electricity and current electricity before I look at 
how electricity are being produced and atoms. I think I should still stick to that. So let me draw out a table to compare static and current electricity. Electrostatics is due to charges built up in the surface of materials, charges in the surface of materials, and these charges are not moving. However, electrostatics is due to negative charges. So the movement of these negative charges will create static electricity in the surface of materials. Meanwhile, current electricity is due to the flow of electrons in the substance. Also, electrostatics develop in both conductors and insulators. Conductors are materials that allow electricity or current to pass through them easily because they have lower resistance, they have lower opposition to the flow of current. So, since electrostatics build up in the surface, they can both be in conductors and insulators. Static charges can be in rubber, metals, or any of these materials. On the other hand, current only develops in conductors. Conductors are materials that allow current to pass through them easily, or metals generally are conductors. For insulators or rubber, current cannot flow through them because these materials, they don't have free electrons. The electrons are tightly bonded, which I will explain in less than five minutes time. Static charges does not induce magnetic field. Under electromagnetic induction, magnets and magnetic field, you will know about magnetic field and how EMF is being induced. When there is relative motion between conductor and magnetic field, EMF is induced. Magnetic field is the region around the magnet where the effect or the magnetic effect is being felt. Just like electric field is the region where electrical force is being experienced. And for current electricity, when a charge is moving, this will produce magnetic field. This is what I'm trying to say. If you run an electric current through a wire, it will produce a magnetic field around that wire. So when current is passed through the wire, it will produce a magnetic field. You understand that better as you go further. Or at this law of uh, electromagnetic induction, Lenz law, uh, magnetic laws, a whole lot of magnetic and magnetic bits. We, we shall get there. We are not running. We are not going anywhere. Static electricity or electrostatics, they are measured using gold leaf ele electroscope. Gold leaf electroscope. And I explained that um, you see, aluminum can somehow be used or sometimes be used in the electroscope because it can be broken into powder and it, it can uh, deflect without this uh, sensitivity or responsiveness. But for current, we measure them using analog or digital meter. Current generally are measured using a meter most time. And the unit of current is the ampere. If I say 2 ampere, 2 A, it basically means I'm talking about current. Why voltage is measured in volts and the instrument used to measure voltage is voltmeter. You can use other instruments. Uh, yeah, we shall get there. Current measuring devices, voltage measuring devices, and resistance measuring devices. Electrostatics, electric, static electricity can be produced from lightning, from lightning strokes, rubbing balloons, comb on your head to generate charges. So all these small, small tricks, ebonite rods and four, all those stuff, they can be used to generate static electricity. Meanwhile, current electricity can either come from, current can either come from battery, from AC source, your generation station can be done, your socket, and they are used in your TV, light, and fan. Or the electricity used in your TV, light, fan, <laughs> around and around, those are current electricity. Static electricity or electrostatics cannot give you that. Now let's look at something very, very important. Something very, very important. Current electricity can be DC or AC. And this class, we are introducing DC circuits, direct current electricity. 
This they always flow in one direction and they have terminus a positive and negative terminal. Now, how does or how is electricity produced? How is electricity produced? This takes us back to the concept of atom. An atom is the smallest particle, a substance of matter that can take part in chemical reaction. Atoms are very small, so minute. Despite how small atoms are, they have smaller part of it. And this smaller part of it is referred to as, not just referred, they have different names. They have um, proton, electron, and neutron. These are subatomic particles. And studies further show that even these particles like proton can be further broken down to smaller particles called quarks. They will have position and you know advanced studies. But for this school and this class, the subatomic particles we shall be looking at are the proton, electron, and neutron. Let's see the structure of the atom. Diagrammatically or in the board format, uh, for your exam, if we are drawing structure of atom. We'll take it like this, like this, and we say this is inside the atom. This inside of the atom, we call it nucleus. Inside the nucleus is where we find the proton and the neutron. So proton, P and N, they are inside the neutron. P is positively charged. The proton is negative, uh, positively charged. This neutron does not have charge, it is neutral. Now, the mass of the atom is concentrated in the nucleus. Proton, because atomic mass, mass of atom, is the sum of proton and neutron. Which means electron contributes least or lowest to the mass of an atom. If proton and neutron are in the nucleus of an atom, where does electron Beside electron, they revolve around the atom and they are negatively charged. If I draw an atom like this, inside this shell, let's say this is the nuclear, this is the first shell, it will carry maximum of two electrons. So for this, the first element is hydrogen, the second one is helium. Now the number one atom or the number one element is based on the number of proton. So the atomic number of any element is the, is the number of proton it has. If it has one proton, then the atomic number is one. For example, hydrogen has one proton, so atomic number of hydrogen is one. Helium has two proton, atomic number is two. So the atomic number is equal to number of proton. When an atom is neutral, which means if the number of proton is the same thing as the number of electron in an atom, the atomic number can also be the number of electrons. The first 20 elements are hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon, sodium, magnesium, aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, argon, potassium, and calcium. These are the first 20 elements. Ladies and gentlemen. So if this is the first share, we call the first share K share. The second share L, M, and so on. In fact, I under atomic theories, I did a good job there in chemistry. Various atomic theories, John Dalton's atomic theory, Rutherford's atomic theory, JJ Thompson, Nebor who proposed the theory, the concept of orbitals, and the wave, wave magnets model, where we saw some heavyweight or heavy names, like Louis de Brock, Moana Helsingberg, Erwin Schrodinger, then later, Albert Einstein, who proposed the relative, relativity theory, 
And who also told us how to change um, the relationship between energy and matter? Energy and matter. How to how to turn matter to energy, energy to matter. So basically, this is Einstein's equation. E is equal mc squared. So this is the mass difference and the speed of light. The relativity theory was very very important, and I heard that what Einstein was uh, he was working on something before he died, which is the unification theory. A formula that can unite the full universe. So that is by the way, side ladies and gentlemen. Now, if this share is full, in the next share, let's say you have one electron or two or three or whatever. Now let's look at the types of materials. A material can be conductor or insulator whether a material is conductor or an insulator is determined by the electrons in the atom in some atom or some materials the electrons are tightly bonded bonded or bounded so they are tight you cannot put them out they are so so tight they are not free you can't put them out. In those type of materials, or those type of materials are called insulator. Because the electrons in them, they are so tight to the atom that they cannot even uh, move out. They are not even free. They just hold the electron tight. Now we have the material or substances where electrons are loose. Or they are loosely bounded. So if you have those type of materials are referred to as what? Conductor. Now, if you have this conductor, it will be made up, let's say this is a wire, copper wire. It will obviously be made up of billions and billions of electrons, or atoms rather, and electrons also. This material you are seeing, atom is the unit of matter, smallest unit of matter. So to build up only this, you have to combine billions and billions of atoms to make up what you are seeing like this. Right? So, left alone this board, you know how many billions and billions and billions and billions of atoms that will combine together to make up this matter. So, if this is a wire, the normal copper wire that you see, or aluminum wire, it will be made up of a lot of electrons. So, let's say here, or a lot of atoms rather, please. Let's say here you have one atom like this, with one electron in the atom share. Here you have another atom with one electron in the atom share. You have another like this electron in the nucleus, like this. So many atoms in the wire. And for conductors, the electrons are loose, they are free to move, they are not bounded, they are not so selfish like insulators. Now, if you have a source of power here, let's say you apply voltage here, the voltage or EMF or any electrical force. Well, look at what happens. Immediately the voltage gets to this atom, the electron here will get energy. Since it was not so tight before, this, ele uh, this electron here will be so loose, it will be free to move. All the electrons in there, all the electrons in the atom or in the wire, they will be free. They will be jumping, 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 jumping. So this gets excited. You say, wow, this is voltage. Bah! Jumps and enter here, right? The electron here gains energy, woo, jumps and enter here. This one gains energy, woo, jumps and enter here. So this one gains energy, jumps and enter here. So by the time they begin to move and move and move, we say that there is movement of electron in a conductor. As such, current is moving. As such, electricity is moving. Ladies and gentlemen, we come to the end of this class. Introduction to DC circuits or introduction to current electricity. In the next episode, we shall be looking at important terms when it comes to DC circuits or current electricity, like the EMF, the voltage, the potential difference, the resistance or resistors, resistivity, and every other thing you need to know. No stone shall be left unturned. Get the flash learners application 
and begin to look at questions. It is going to help you. See you in the next episode.